today it's time to tackle the wheels. This car, if you've noticed, seeing any of the videos previously, this car has two blue wheels and two chrome wheels. And these are from, I believe anyway, this is the only ones that I ever knew that were blue, from the 30th anniversary edition uh, Trans Am. They don't, they don't look right being blue, and uh, they apparently aren't really worth anything as they are, uh, other than as regular rims, which they're worth that to me. So I'm gonna try to get the blue out of it and restore them back to chrome. My understanding on these rims is that the blue is actually just tinted clear coat. That would kind of explain why there's like, you know, seemingly 12 or 15 different colors of blue on these wheels over the years. I've, I've never seen two cars with the same color rims. I'm just gonna try to strip the clear off and hope it takes the blue out. And then shine the chrome up. It's got a little bit of, of um, corrosion. So we'll go through the stripping process the restoration and get them all nice and glossy again. The front wheels are chrome, but they're a little bit aged. And depending on how this turns out, if these get real nice, which I obviously hope they do. Well, I may do those too, because now the two back wheels are gonna look really nice. The two front wheels are gonna look kind of old. So maybe we'll do those while we're at it. But I'm at least gonna start here. And I'm gonna use this aircraft stripper. This is the aircraft ultra. Um, I've heard mixed reviews on the regular, the original aircraft stripper, that it isn't as good as it used to be. Uh, some of the chemicals they use in it, have, they've decided they aren't very good for the whales. So, um, or maybe they cause cancer. I don't know, both probably. So they don't use them anymore. So then they made it this one, which is apparently something, by, by some reviews I've read, closer to the old stuff. I've never used the old stuff. I've never used this stuff. So I don't know, I'll take the word for it, but I'm gonna give it a shot because I have seen some people more recently use this and it seems to work. I'm gonna do it on this wheel first because I'm actually hoping I can do this without taking the tires off. And it would save me some time and money. This tire has a nail on the sidewall, so that's gonna have to come off anyway. So if I damage the tire, I don't really care. Uh, but I don't wanna damage this one because it's a good tire. Um, I got a new tire coming, so that's going to get replaced later, but for now I'm going to try to see if I can do this with the wheels on, with the tires on. I just want to strip the inside, so I'm not even going to get stripper all the way to the, to the edge. So I should be safe, but we'll see. I've never used this stuff before, but I've heard some good stuff. Uh, let's see how it works. All right, like I said, I'm gonna start with this wheel first. I got these put up on this board to get them up because I don't feel like working them on the ground. I'm gonna get a cup to put some of this in. It's pretty thick stuff. And use like a chip brush and brush it on nice and thick. Oh, I gotta pop these caps out first. Let's get rid of those. So I'm just using like, like a picnic cup. Just, I don't know. Should be safe for that cup. We'll see if it melts the cup. <laughs> That would be wild. I probably should use some chemical gloves. These are just, you know, thin nitrile gloves. It says not to use a strip of bathtub. It's good to know. Yeah, it's pretty potent stuff. I think I'm gonna open, it's warm out today, but I'm gonna open some windows. Get a cross breeze going. Just to vent out some of the fumes. Let's see what we're working with here. Whoa, <clears throat> that is potent stuff. <coughs> it says not to spread it thin. So I'm gonna put it on pretty thick. Just don't wanna drip too much because I don't wanna waste it. <sighs> Man, just leaning over this stuff. <clears throat> it puts it on is Stings the nostrils. Stings the nostrils. Oh, it's already coming off. This works fast. Look at that. Just, just, it's coming off on the brush. And it's blue. That's a good sign. I hope. It says it works in a half an hour or less. Uh, I'm assuming you don't want to leave it so long that it will dry. So, 
I'm just going to go ahead. I have enough left. I'm going to go ahead and come around the rim here. I just have more, so I'm gooping it out. I don't know why. I'm going to leave it. I'm done. Let's just let it go. We'll let this sit for, it says, 30 minutes or less. We're going to go, we'll give it 20, 30 minutes. See how it goes. That worked really good. For one round, anyway. It was one round of stripper. Let it sit about a half an hour. I got some steel wool and tried to see if I could grind it off. That didn't work super awesome. And I realized this is all just falling into the tabletop here, this, this plywood. And then like that, so I took it outside and hosed it off. And when I did, a lot more came off under fairly light water pressure. I'm going to take this outside and do it out there because uh, having the wa access to the water, I think, will help. Also, it, I'm not, this stuff is super pungent. <laughs> it's like, I can taste it. Uh, just, I have windows open, I've got fans on, I've got an exhaust fan running, and this whole place smells like chemical. So I'm gonna move this outside so I don't die. Also, I think getting the hose and being able to hose this stuff off the wheels will be better, because I already have some. I can see it on the wheels now, and I'm a little worried about what it's gonna do to the rubber. So I'm gonna take this, this whole setup, get outside, get it in the shade so I'm not in direct sunlight. And uh, it's, it's hot and humid today, but so I may have to keep an eye on this and not let it go very long, but I bet it's gonna work better outside and I may even get the pressure washer out. Let's give this one another round and then we'll do a round on that one. We'll give this one another round of cooking. Man, <laughs> this stuff is pretty nasty. I would definitely recommend doing this outside. Um, that was a bad idea doing it indoors just just saying dude this is no amount of my opinion i don't have the, the ventilation capability to have made that work so it was never going to be good enough the garage still smells like a chemical factory uh the only problem now is these are still kind of wet i should have blown them off before i uh did this so at least get the water off it. But that's what it is now. Um, these gloves, I'm out of the green gloves and these are the gloves I hate and they're really hard to get on. Like my hands barely fit in them anyway. My giant gorilla hands. But trying to put them on outdoors while your hands are sweaty, that's a whole nother level of difficulty. Once this is all done and we get them clean, then we'll have to clean up the metal the chrome i've got some chrome polish we'll see if we can clean up some of the corrosion and we may even get a little more aggressive get sand them i don't know like i again how far we want to take this we, we, there's a there's a there's a point we can go too far and and then it isn't really worth it so we'll just see how this goes if i can just get them back to silver to chrome i think that would be fine. And then doing it outside keeps all of this crap that does come off from being on the floor of the garage. This is not a clean job. It's definitely a messy job. But so far, I think it's pretty effective. Just wish I could do it in the air conditioning because it's awfully sticky out here today. I also think I should have probably scuffed these up a little and maybe even Definitely cleaned them because I bet they were kind of dirty and I bet the dirt's getting in the way of this really working very well. Anyway, we'll give this another 20 minutes or so and see how it goes. It's been about 20. I'm kind of worried about the heat and it drying too much. I don't know if that's warranted, but I am. So I'm going to hose it off and we'll see what it looks like. If we have to do another round, we'll do another round. Okay, still didn't get all. I wonder if I hit it with some steel wool now. Break it up a little bit. So I'm trying to keep this pretty light. This is real like, this is like 
quad zero, triple zero, real, real fine steel wool. All right, well, it's getting there. I think I'm gonna put another round of it on. Let me move over here. I do wonder about the power washer. I'm also wondering about eye protection now. This is splashing all over the place. And some of it's just splashing in my face. It's also possible I just didn't give this enough time to eat, you know? Maybe I'm in the room jump on the gun. This needs more cook time. I'm gonna do this other way. Let me get the pressure washer out here and try that. I'm gonna put it on the ground. Let's get where you can see, but not get all wet. Okay, yeah, that works better. Okay, so besides the fact I'm getting soaking wet, I think I've reached the limit as far as what it's taken off, but that did work a lot better. So I am gonna let these dry. I'll probably get an air gun out here and try to dry them off. I'll do one more round of stripper and then just use the pressure washer to get rid of everything. Not bad. This is, uh, let's see which wheel is this one? This is the one with the nail in it? Yeah, this is three coats and pressure washing after the last two instead of just the hose. And then this one, it was just two coats of the stripper and it's got like 99.9% .9 of it off. There's a few spots that still, now that I bring it back inside, has still have a little blue on it. I, there's some corrosion here that I'm going to probably try to sand and polish. So I'm going to see if maybe I can just sand the rest of that clear coat off. Uh, I'm going to start really high grit though, because I don't want to scratch up this chrome any more than I have to. This makes a lot more polishing and quite honestly i've done a lot of sanding and polishing these days and i'm a little tired of it so but it is what it is um but i already have some scratch marks on it from the from the steel wool so i'm gonna get some let's see i think i'm gonna start with 2000 grit get it good and wet Put these down now. I, you know, this by hand is gonna be a lot of work. Power sander would be a lot easier, but I don't have a sander small enough. I'm gonna start with some of this really bad corrosion, like right here, just because I can't really make it any worse. Again, just like the car, perfection is not what I'm going for here because it's kind of unattainable, I think. I'm going for some version of good enough. All right, before we get too crazy, let's just see if that metal will polish back around. Get a drill. I'm using one of these um, wool pads because so I think they cut a little better than the foam ones. Meguiar's has that foam cone, which is a good thing. Uh, it works pretty well, but it does tend to fall apart. What does this say? And I'm also using this Blue Magic Metal Polish Cream. I've never used this, but I've been told it's really good. Before I go crazy with the drill, let's start with just a cloth. I'm making quite a mess here. It's pretty awesome.
it'll turn black, which is supposedly a good thing. Didn't really do much. Let's get a little bit. Let's turn the speed down though. Well, it's definitely bringing the shine back around. It's going to take a lot more than that, but it is coming back. Awesome. So it's just going to take a little longer, but I got time. That's actually not true. I don't have that much time. But, oh, that was way too much. That's going to spray everywhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a little more speed, maybe? Ooh, that's too much. Well, that definitely is better than the corrosion. I probably won't end up clear coating these. Well, for one, if they shine up nice and he just takes a polish now and then and maybe put a coat of wax on them to keep them shiny, then I'm good with that. As I'm not, oh, secondly, I'm really not yet very good at clear coat. That turns out nice. And it certainly turns out good enough. And good enough is, well, good enough. Whew. It's gonna be a lot of work, but we're gonna keep going. I got one fifth of we'd like whatever. I mean quite one fifth, but one internal spoke. So this is the worst corrosion one. That had the most blue on it, but so we'll go around with the 2000 grit and clean the rest of this up. And then uh, we'll come back and polish the whole thing. But I'm pretty happy with it so far.
Well, I got these because those foam ones want to come apart, and this one's like throwing little strings everywhere. So, maybe it doesn't make that big a difference. I do like how it's coming out, though. It's going to take a lot more polishing, a lot more sanding, a lot more polishing. So, I will let you go for a bit. I'll keep digging at this. I'll bring you back in a little bit and we'll check on the progress. Okay, so this is one round of 1200 grit, then 2000, then 2500, and then polish. And I did the polish at two speeds, a low speed to start with, kind of get everything going. And, and once you get all the goopy stuff kind of gone and spread out, then I went, flipped it to a higher speed uh, on the drill and made a little progress that way. It's a little blotchy, like it's just, it's hard for me with that drill to keep things steady, to kind of wants to run all over the place. So I don't think I'm getting very consistent. It certainly needs another round of polish, but it's starting to really come back. Like some spots, I don't know how well this shows up on camera, but that's pretty clear. That's pretty clear. That's a little hazy. Um, this is getting real clear here. I think the, the shine's coming back. It's just going to take a lot more effort. I'm going to take a break here though, because I'm getting hungry and I need to go clean up for dinner and probably come back and work on this a little more tomorrow. See you then. All right, polished up. I am super happy with how these turned out. And I will probably, uh, I'm not a good enough, I said this at the beginning, I'm not a good enough clear coater, painter, to clear coat these and have them look this nice. So I'm just gonna wax them, put some a good coating of uh, like carnauba wax on and buff it off. And that probably won't make it any more shiny. It'll just gonna do a little bit of protection for the shine I have. This is good enough. I'm, I'm, I'm super happy with this. From the other side of the parking lot, the ice cream shop, that looked pretty good. And you know, if you're gonna run around and do burnouts in it anyway, you're gonna jack your wheels all up. So I will clean this up and we'll get, these are the rear wheels and we'll get the front wheels on here and clean those up. I don't know how well you can see this on camera, but for those of you who are wondering why I'm not just gonna take this all the way to, back to like OEM shine. This is the driver's side front rim. There's two, Pretty decent, look like claw marks here, little scratches. There's a big deep gouge right here and goes up onto the lip of the rim. There's a dent right here where it probably got curbed. It probably hit a curb right here and rashed this wheel, it scratches here. So that, there's no amount of polish I can do that's gonna get rid of those. That has to be grinded down, uh, and that's, that's through the chrome. So either sandblast or, or you know grind through the chrome and, and then refinish them. That's more than I want to spend on this. And certainly I don't have the capacity to do it myself. So I'm not going to spend countless hours trying to get this back to super shiny, except for this and except for that and the big dent. Like it's, those are still going to stand out, so there's no point. We're just going to get it almost all the way there. These cars were not special, right? The late 90s, early, you know, even in the 2000s, the LS-based uh, Trans Ams, Firebirds, Camaros, they weren't particularly special for their era. They were just a fun little car. And so people had fun with them. They, they ripped them around, did donuts and burnouts and drifts and probably hit the curb a few times. And maybe even if you live up in the north, gasp, drove them in the snow. They are what they are. Now they're, they, you know, some of them, they, they were garage queens and there's um, they were low miles and pretty paint. And, and those are great, but they're pretty rare. Uh, most of them a lot like this one high miles a little beat up but uh we're gonna get it back to something close to original and i think that's good enough i'll finish polishing this one we've got this sanded down so now it's time for polish and we'll get it as good as we can get and then we'll get the passenger side tire off i wasn't gonna do the fronts but once i do this one this was uh this was pretty nasty to begin with uh, as far as far as cloudiness and and fading and the passenger side one's just as bad. So now that one looks really bad compared to the other three. So I'll take that one off, but that one doesn't need any stripping, just needs some light sanding and, uh, and then polish. So they do have a little bit of a film on them. I don't know, like for regular polish, it's probably fine. For this application, it, it leaves a little bit of a film behind that I'm not a big fan of. Like it doesn't quite come all the way off when you wipe it off, which I think is designed to protect the metal but it leaves a little bit of a haze. Uh, so I'm giving a little bit of the Adams, like a waterless wash. You see how 
black that towel is now when I'm wiping. That's all the sort of residual polish. Um, yeah, that's better. So I washed all the wheels first, and then I'll give them a coat of wax here. So I'll give it a coat of wax. Uh, I would like to use a good heavy carnauba wax here, even though it's a little harder to work with, especially in these small like wheel spaces, but it's a much tougher wax. My carnauba wax, as I wanted to get it out, <laughs> is like a brick. It's like rock hard. So I threw it away. And we'll just go with a liquid wax. This does pretty good. This is the buttery wax from Adams. Uh, it's really easy to work with. My only issue with it for this application is it doesn't last a super long time in my experience. With the Chevelle, when we go to car shows, I basically would use this every car show. So just to shine it up. But I can do that because it's super easy to work with. You just kind of wipe it on with some kind of pad. You can wipe it on with a, with a cloth. I just use a microfiber pad. And you give it about a minute or two and it hazes up and then you can wipe it off. Now you can also, if I left it for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I've left it for an hour or two minutes, it wipes off the same. So this stuff is super easy to work with. It really is for all purpose wax, it's my favorite wax. Uh, I just wish I had something a little stronger for these rims because I'm not clear coating them and so I don't want them to continue to corrode or get more water spots on them and that sort of thing. So. This is the best I've got for today. I probably in the future, uh, if we keep this long enough, I will probably do something different, probably get better at clear coat and re-clear these, these rims. But for now, we're just gonna, we're just gonna hit them with the, with the wax. And that'll be good enough for now. Good enough for the rest of the summer here, you know, and uh, it'll look pretty. The very least, they're not blue anymore and they're not all corroded. That is good enough. So, let's get back on the car. I don't know about you, I think it looks pretty good. I still got some rash here on the side, not much I'm gonna do about that. I did grind, the, got the Dremel out and kinda ground down some of the sharp edges because it was really tearing up my pads. I think it looks really nice. Uh, that's the front wheel, let's go to the back. I'll show you that one, the, one of the blue ones. No more blue. At least they're all the same color, kinda like the car. It may not be perfect, but at least it's all the same color. Couple coats of wax on, I think it looks pretty good. We're gonna call it done. So yeah, a couple things, right? We got the blue clear coat off. So if you've got clear coat that's peeling, you got some corrosion on the wheels underneath it, you can put that stripper on, sand that corrosion down, and get it back to a nice glossy finish with some polish. To get it really super glossy and protect it long term, they should be clear coated. I'm not gonna do that, I did the wax instead. But I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just not good enough at it. And I think I'll make them look worse if I try to clear coat them. So I'm gonna leave them like they are. Also, if you have, like you maybe saw in some of the wheels, you have real deep scratches or cuts in the chrome, or the chrome itself is peeling, this doesn't fix that problem. You'll have to strip those wheels down and probably with a media blasting or something like that, and then um, recoat them, re refinish the wheels. Re-chrome, powder coat, whatever you wanna do. But if you just have some light corrosion on your wheels, they can be saved. Uh, and you, I don't know, we'll probably get another 20 years out of these wheels. Hope you find that interesting, hope it helps you. Appreciate you guys very much, and uh, we'll see you real soon.